Welcome back to Switch to Linux. This is Tom and a kitty. And we are going to have a very quick preview of Debian Netrunner. So, uh, the Netrunner distro is one that a few people have asked me to look at in the past. Uh, so I had a look at it today. It's installed in a virtual machine and we will log into that virtual machine in a few moments here. Um, but what we are going to do is uh, first we'll walk through real briefly what is Netrunner and then uh, we'll go into um, looking at the actual uh, at the actual distro in a uh, virtual box. So uh, here is their website which is at netrunner.com and you can go right on over there to netrunner.com and uh, get all the information, get the download links, etc. Uh, in brief, Netrunner is a KDE uh, uh, basically a, a KDE specialized KDE distro that is for your basic system and, and classically it, it used to be based on Ubuntu it is now based on Debian um, but as of today you can now get a rolling release based on Arch now the thing that makes us different than other distros is that it is focused on a on a more streamlined KDE and I found that uh, for for the various KDEs that I've used over over the years even in a virtual box this one is a very snappy KDE um, now I haven't used it enough to know for sure if it always will be uh, but from what I see it's it is a very nice KDE uh, implementation and so uh, you can come over here to their to their main site. Uh, you can see that this um, it was today. I believe this is today's date. Uh, as of today, a rolling release. Now, a rolling release was available up to a few years back, and then they discontinued it. But as of today, the rolling release is back. The rolling release is based on Arch and Manjaro, and um, the the more stable release is based on uh, Debian. Now the thing is, you can get a core which contains just the uh, just the package base and the desktop environment, and very little else. So you can build out your own system, which is a great option. Or you can get the version that I have downloaded, which is more of a complete solution. And so. Uh, you can get either of those options. You can also, though, get an ARM copy, so you should be able to run this on any ARM processor as well. So you can see here that we have the um, we have the uh, uh, Netrunner here, the 17.06. Um, we also have the Core, which would be your one with very few uh, very few packages in it. You'll see the size. This one that I've downloaded is about 2.2, 2.3 gig. I thought is what Torrent said. The core is 1.3 gig, and then we have the rolling release, which is based on Manjaro, also at 2.3. So it looks like we don't have a, a rolling release core. Um, but you can actually download this, um, and I spin it up in a virtual box, just took a few minutes. You can download these, and then um, there is also the forums, which I actually did not go over to the forums, but you can see where all the, you know, the forums here, there's a lot of in information on these. And so what we will do here is I'm just going to go ahead and boot up the virtual machine and that will allow us to see what we are doing here. So here we are. We have logged into Netrunner. It's still loading. I just entered the password there. Should be up in just a second. Uh, guest editions is installed out of the box. So you did not have to mess with any of this. Um, and everything works really well, even on a virtual machine. I've left this mostly uh, mostly un, untouched. I did change the menu. One of the things, you know, that's something I did not do earlier. Is I did not pull up the um, uh, I did not pull up the uh, the change logs. Um, I do not know why so many Linux distros are still using Google. Really, people, can we do away with Google yet, please? Pretty pretty please. Okay, so over here you see what the uh, the specifications are. So they say a simple menu in Dash, which is the the basic menu in that is installed by default in the core. Now this is not the core, so I added the simple menu. This is what it is. For me, this is a little too simple for uh, for a KDE, but it works. It's it's good. Um, so you have our our search up at the top. We have a, just a basic menu option, and then you have your uh, shutdown, restart, etc. up there at the top. Um, they also talk about the task manager with expanding icons. Um, 
the other thing that is different from this from most of the other uh, KDE implementations is that out of the box it has the desktop icons on default and they are tooled to behave more like most people are used to and that you have to double click on them in order to open them up. Um, however, I do notice something weird is that the My Computer does not actually open My Computer, it opens the About system. Uh, so they have that retooled. I'm not sure I like that because I like getting in there and actually manipulating the file systems. Uh, but regardless, that's, um, that's what they are doing. Uh, we have a README right up here on the desktop. So you can go right onto this. Now this is actually accessing the internet. So that is a downside if you're having issues with your networking card that you actually have to have a network connection in order to view the readme. I'd kind of like to see them take a readme and put it as just an HTML copy right on the, uh, uh, right on the, um, uh, right on the, the computer there itself. That way we don't have to mess with the network. Um, my mouse is still doing weird things, by the way, so it's uh, every now and again, if I scroll the wheel just right, it'll do something goofy like open a new tab or whatever else. Uh, so, all right. Go back to the Netrunner list here. Okay, so um, we have Hotspot Show Desktop in lower right corner. I'm guessing that might uh, correspond to Core. That would be down here in the very very bottom right corner that's what I always do I have not dropped it in there yet um, but they say it's there I'm guessing that's core because this like I said I didn't I didn't do any adjustments to this and I don't have a show desktop icon on here it does auto start the K wallet some people might like that some people might, might hate that um, the system settings is a little bit different um, so sorry this cat is just shedding like crazy it's and it's sitting right here and it's just like i got hair flying all over my face um so you can see it does look a little bit different um being used to kde i'm not sure i actually like this as much i just because i'm used to where things are but if a new user is not as used to kde this actually does make a little bit more sense how they have things organized we have account details you can set up your online accounts Clicking into your desktop appearance will get you your look and feel. One of the things I liked about this is that they do actually have multiple themes in here. Uh, certainly more than, than KDE usually has on most of the implementations that I have seen. Um, so you can see, uh, see that is a little bit different. And then, um, let's see... The Firefox ESR and Thunderbird with Plasma integration. Um, now this one here is, uh, it's actually does, is not seeming to work for me. If you notice when I first booted on it, it'll, it gave you a, a warning there about the integration not working. So I can actually come over here to my add-ons and I can see that it's here. I'm not sure if it's working. What it's supposed to do is add media controls to your main KDE, um, allow KDE connect to function. Um, we can do uh, browser tabs and the command. We can basically show things in the notification area. So that is uh, what the thing is supposed to be doing. I'm not sure if it's working correctly for me or not because I, I do keep on getting the error notice showed up. And of course, uh, unified look uh, look for KDE and non-KDE applications. So actually, that's that's good. This is an overall a very good implementation of KDE. It's It's fast. It's snappy. I like it. Um, I might be inclined to recommend this to a new user, particularly a new user who wants to use KDE. I think that this might be the go-to option for that. Um, also, you know, as us people who are the computer geeks, oftentimes setting up computers uh, for friends and family who are trying, wanting to try out Linux, you can pick either the Arch-based or the Debian-based, depending on which option you like better. Um, and it is a very snappy system that you can uh, you can do some configuration. Now onto some of the things I don't like about it. Um, again, there is a core version, so this would not apply to the core version, but this one here, it seems to me a little too bloated in software. Um, so if we come up here into games, um, you know, there's a whole lot of games on here. I'm not a gamer, so I don't usually use these. Things like Steam are so customized. I'm not even sure I care for Steam being auto-installed on a desktop unless that's one of the selling features is a Linux gaming system. Um, so, but it is there, but there's just a whole lot of other games on here. Um, you know, I've probably seen more, but let's see. Let's click up some of these. Okay, so this is uh, just a basic... Uh, 
basic gaming stuff. Uh, Burger Space. Oh, yeah. Nice. Love it. Um, under your graphics, we have both GIMP and we have Krita. Um, I, I think that a developer should really pick one or the other. They, they essentially essentially are kind of software packages for the same target and very few people need Inkscape so it's just one of those things that I'm not quite sure why they have included three you know really more premium more professional software packages out of the box it'd be better just to say yeah they exist and you know mention them or whatever rather than install install all these because they are fairly large as far as the, your internet um, we do have the Firefox ESR um, we also have Skype, uh, and it's and it's not the Skype application that actually is functional. It's this beta Skype. Last time, now I haven't used this in a while, and I'm not really sure I'm inclined to try it with the new changes in Skype. But last time I tried this, it actually doesn't work. You can't do conferences. You can't really do video shares. You can talk, but the call drops every few minutes. I'm not sure if they fixed any of the bugs, but it comes with Skype pre-installed. Uh, for some reason, and which, uh, that's the world map. I was trying to remember what what uh, what the uh, marble was, but that's the world map. That's right. Uh, as far as your multimedia, again, we have a lot of applications that are kind of more niche applications, like like Handbrake for DVD uh, ripping. I mean, not a lot of people need that, and those that need it can usually find it pretty quick. Uh, Caden Live is good. Uh, Voco Screen. Uh, we have Pulse Audio. Um, the G Music browser for me looks uh, it looks promising. I think I'm going to look into this. The problem is, um, and I've encountered this with pretty much every KDE system I've used, not very friendly for network sharing. I cannot access any of my uh, any of my folders. I can't even if I manually uh, try and load in the uh, SMB clients or any other shared folders, any other networking stuff doesn't work. So I wanted to drop a bunch of music on here so I could play with the G Music browser. It looks promising. It looks like a, a type of application I would like to use, but you know, I couldn't get the networking to work. So that's kind of a negative point. If you do need networking and you want to use this or pretty much any KDE implementation, you're going to have to fight with the networking a little bit. As far as Office, nothing too out of the ordinary here. We just have your basic LibreOffice installed. Uh, which is good and expected basic system settings grub customizer and then here you can see um, you know we have uh, we have pa uh, uh, synaptic package manager info centers partitioners uh, etc and then our utilities so it is a good complete operating system um, it works you know it works pretty well it's pretty snappy um, even when I was running this on the um, uh, on your launcher let's see I guess it was dashboard, I guess is the default. Switch that back. And your Windows Meta key does work. So you can see here, even this works really well out of the box. It's still very snappy. I mean, this guy here running on a virtual box is way better than this KDE computer behind me, which is still slow and buggy. So overall, I think that this is a good system, particularly if you want to build up a computer for, for a friend or family. This would, might be a good logical choice if you decide that KDE is the system you want. Um, if you're using this, uh, this particular build, probably want to expect to remove some software that's not needed, or you can easily go with the core and just add the things that you specifically need. Uh, expect to fight with the networking a little bit. I've found that to be true with every KDE system I've worked with. Um, but outside of that, you know, it's, it's a good implementation. It, it really gives you that customized KDE feel that really brings in a lot of the, a lot of the, the features that, that you might be used to in a windows type environment, you know, uh, desktop icons, utilizing the desktop more, uh, double clicking things instead of single clicking things and a format and setup that looks more like a windows platform. And the reason I bring up the windows platform is a lot of people are starting to abandon windows because of the privacy issues and the windows 10 crazy issues. And, you know, it's great in the Linux systems that we have the ability to customize and do whatever we want back there. But at the same time, some people just want something that's familiar. Not everybody wants to go out there and figure out how to use their computer again. This is a good, uh, a good KDE build to, to help somebody along in that direction. So uh, that is my, my quick thoughts on, uh, on Netrunner. I know a few people have asked me to look at it in the past, so I wanted to go ahead and do that. 
And uh, once again, if you would like to help support Switch to Linux, you can find me on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. And there are also Amazon links below. So thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.